So we are talking about introduction to organization of public procurement. Remember when you go to most public entities, we have different functions in those organizations. For example, we have the accounting officer. What is the work of an accounting officer? What is the work of the procurement function? So it is very important for you as a procurement officer to be able to understand what are some of the activities that in, uh, procurement officers normally uh, do in their day-to-day -day operations. So remember every organization has its own structure of how goods are received, of how services are normally offered within the organization and how works are normally performed in those organizations. And this is very important because it helps us to understand what are some of the issues that need to be taken into consideration. Remember in organization, you cannot work alone. You have to work with other departments for purposes of ensuring that we have a seamless workflow of services and to ensure that at the end of the day, you are working towards achieving your goal as an organization. And remember one of the objective of some of these structures is to be able to have a more transparent and accountable structure where in the event something happens, you already know who is supposed to be answerable to some of these issues that are happening in the organization. So organization in the public sector involves many, many issues where we have the accounting officer and the accounting officer is normally considered as the head of just a minute, as the head. So in most public entities, you realize that we have an accounting officer. And accounting officer here, we are saying, this is the head, or some people call them the CEO, the chief executive officer of these organizations. And in every organization that you can go to, you will always find that we have the procurement function. And the procurement function is normally the procurement department or the procurement function. So it, they can be used one-on-one. -on -one. You can say procurement function or procurement department. Then we have the different committees. And in public procurement, we have different committees. For example, we have the tender opening committee. What is the work of the tender opening committee? We have other committees like the evaluation committee. What is the work of the evaluation committee? We have the disposal committee and we have the inspection and acceptance committee. So here we will be able to understand some of those functions of those committees. Then you also have the national or the finance department. What is the work of the finance department? So we will start by understanding the role of an accounting officer. And remember we have said, for example, when you look at the ministries, the accounting officer in the ministry is the principal secretary or the PS. The long time ago, they used to be called the, the permanent secretary. Nowadays, they are called the principal secretaries. They are the accounting officers. They are the ones who make day-to-day -day decisions within the various ministries. When you go to parastatals, they are normally referred to as the chief executive officers who are the accounting officer. So one of the responsibility of the accounting officer is to ensure that procurement of goods, works and services are done in accordance with the approved budget. So every financial year, organizations must be able to organize their, their procurement plans based on the budget that they have. So the procurement plan is the one that will form the basis of budget allocation. Then uh, the other responsibility is consulting all procurement and asset disposal committee within a procuring entity, within a procuring entity in accordance with the act. 
And the act here you're saying is the Public Procurement Asset Disposal Act. So we have different committees and the work of the accounting officer is to ensure that they work hand in hand with other departments to come up with the various committees, both the procurement and disposal committee. They also ensure procurement plans are prepared in conformity with the fiscal policy or in conformity with what the National Treasury talks about. Then they also ensure documentation of procurement proceedings are done in accordance to the act. So they will always ensure that at the end of the day, all the documents that are relevant in procurement are filed according to the act. Then they also ensure that there is compliance with the Public Finance Management Act of 2012. So their work is to ensure that all finance officers are able to follow what the act says. They also ensure that at the end of the day, we have uh, ensure procurement and asset disposal process of procurement entity shall comply with the act. So they ensure that all those are complying with, with the act. Then uh, ensure that the procurement processes are handled with different professional offices. Remember, for you to become a professional, you must enroll and do a professional course, which will help you to be a professional. And once you become a professional, you will be required to register as a practitioner for purposes of ensuring that you practice your profession. Then uh, they submit the authority, the part in its procurement plan demonstrating the application of preference and reservation schemes in relation to procurement budgets within 60 days. So they are the ones who help in ensuring that we have the implementation of preference and reservation for people living with disability, for the youth, and for the women. So what is the role of procurement function? Remember, we are saying that the procurement function is the procurement department. And this department is normally handled by professionals. And for you to become a professional, you must at least have a professional qualification, or you must be registered with a professional body. And our body as procurement professional is the Kenya Institute of Supply Management. And if you want to do that professional course, you must go to Kenya Institute of Supply Examination Board, where you'll be registered and you'll do the exams. Once you finish, you can now be qualified to be a practitioner and ensure also you have you are a member with good standing. So what are the roles of uh, the procurement function? The first one is to maintain continuous update standing list of registered suppliers of procuring entity. So they have a database that helps them to ensure that at the end of the day, they're able to maintain the register of suppliers. They also lie with authority in respect to the register of procuring agents. So all these organizations, sometimes they might want to work with agents. Therefore, they must maintain a register of all the agents in that particular organization. They also prepare tenders and asset disposal document to facilitate fair competition. So it is the work of the procuring function to ensure that they prepare the tender documents and the disposal documents. How can they get these documents? They can get the documents by downloading from the public procurement regulatory authority and later editing it to serve as a document of that particular public entity. They also prepare, publish, and distribute procurement and disposal opportunities to various bidders. Then uh, the other thing is that they coordinate the receiving and opening of tender documents. So they're the ones who help in receiving and opening of those tenders before the date of submission, uh, after the submission deadline. Then submitting a list of registered or pre-qualified suppliers or contractors or consultants to the accounting officer for approval. So they ensure that they have a list of all pre-qualified suppliers and contractors and later take it to the accounting officer for approval or signing. 
They proposed the members of relevant committees under the Procurement and Asset Disposal Act to the accounting officer for consideration and appointment. So they normally propose members who are going to be considered in various committees within the public procurement. Then they also coordinate the evaluation of tenders, quotation and, and proposal. So their work is to ensure that at the end of the day, they coordinate evaluation of tenders. And remember evaluation we said is normally done in three stages where we have the preliminary evaluation, we have the technical evaluation, and finally we have the financial evaluation. They also prepare and publish tender awards. So once the successful bidder has been given the tender, they will always publish the successful tenderers and their award. They also prepare documents, contract documents in line with the award decision. So they, they prepare and issue debriefing letters. So once uh, they share the information, or maybe if they want to share information about successful bidders and unsuccessful bidders, they always share what is called a debriefing letter so that they can invite various suppliers for purposes of telling them some of the reasons as to why their contract was not considered or they were considered for that particular contract. They also prepare contract variation and modification document. In case we have variations in the contract, it is their work to ensure that they are able to modify. They also maintain archives, procurement and asset disposal documents and records for a certain period of time. In that in the event we have an audit issue or an audit query, they'll always go back to their archives and be able to retrieve crucial documents. The functions are very many. You can read them and understand. They are self-explanatory. So let's jump to the tender opening committee. The tender opening committee is normally an ad hoc committee. When we talk about ad hoc, we mean that this committee is a temporary committee. And it is the work of the accounting officer to come up with the tender committee. So they are the ones who are supposed to formulate some of this committee. Uh, they appoint the, the, the members of the committee. So the committee is required to open all tenders and bidders received at the exact time indicated in the tender or quotation document. So they normally ensure that the process is followed and that the tender opening committee is responsible for ensuring that all tenders that have been received are opened and the time that they were received is indicated in the document. During the tender opening, the committee will assign a number to each bid opened and record the number of pages. So it is always important to record the number of pages of the tender. So that in the event we have queries or about the number of pages, you'll always refer to where you, you wrote those items. Or in the event, maybe somebody has plucked some papers inside, you can easily tell. They sign each tender document on pages determined by the committee and init initial the quotation price page. So it is very important that they sign in a number of pages that is normally determined by the committee members. The committee shall minute the proceedings and hand over the bid and signed minutes the head of procurement unit. So they must be able to write uh, uh, the minutes of the proceedings for the committee. The committee shall not disqualify any tender during tender opening. So they will receive all tenders, regardless of whether they meet the criteria that was set or not. Then the next stage or the next uh, organization is the evaluation committee. Remember, all committees are ad hoc committees. They are temporary in nature. So 
The evaluation committee normally deal with the technical and financial aspect of procurement, as well as negotiation of the process. They normally perform evaluation with the due diligence. They conduct evaluation within the provided time frame. And uh, they also enter into direct communication with the suppliers or contractors who responded in the tender evaluation. They also seek clarification on tender or proposal under consideration through the head of procuring unit. Remember, we said that we have the procuring unit, which is normally headed by the, the procurement, maybe manager or the head of procurement. The committee members shall sign the confidentiality the declaration form before conducting evaluation. Why do they sign this declaration of confidentiality? So that in any given circumstances, you are not supposed to share the information in the tender or the process of tendering so that some people don't have an advantage over other individuals. They have the, the procurement unit also is normally in charge of the secretariat. The person in charge of procurement function or his or her designate. So remember procurement members are normally the secretaries of the committee. And the committee that we are talking about is the evaluation of the committee. So once that is done, once they do the evaluation committee is finished, the next thing that they have to do is to ensure that they come up with a report. And this report is shared to the head of procurement function, who is going to give a professional opinion on the same. So once they come up with the minutes, the minutes is shared with the head of procurement function who then must give an opinion. Once the opinion is given, then the opinion is then forwarded to the accounting officer who is going to, to either accept or reject. And if he rejects, it will go back to the process again. The role of the head of procurement Number one is to manage all procurement and disposal of procuring entities. So their work is to manage all procurement and all disposal. The head is responsible for giving a professional opinion to the accounting officer. And after, uh, the professional opinion is normally done after reviewing the evaluation report that is issued or that was issued by the committee. The opinion basically provides a guide in the case of a dissent between the tender evaluation and recommendation for contract. So the opinion basically is, is going to give a guide to the accounting officer who will then make a decision based on the opinion. A professional opinion should be independent and unbiased. So you are not supposed to be biased when you're writing the professional opinion. It should be based on proper analysis of procurement process and best practice. So you need to consider the best, best practice in procurement. It is also supported So what are the contents? What are the content? Number one, a review of procurement or asset disposal proceeding. Number two, it must have an adherence of the evaluation criteria stipulated in the bid document. Then the legality of the tender award is also recommended. And also 
it gives recommendations of various issues that are very, very critical. Then the other thing that we have is the contract implementation team, the contract implementation team. So what is the work of the contract implementation team? Number one is to monitor the performance of the contractor. So they monitor what the contractor is doing and maybe give recommendations or areas of improvement that need to be looked at. They ensure that the contractor submits all required documents as specified in the tender document. Then uh, they also ensure that the contractors are paid in advance so that they can work effectively. They also ensure that we have the right quality and the projects are normally done within the, the time frame. They also ensure that they review the contract variations and give recommendations on areas of improvement or areas that need to be looked at thinly. Um, then they manage the handover process. Remember once a project is completed, the project must be handed over to the organization or the owners of the project. Therefore, the work of this team is to ensure that the, um, the handover is seamless. They also make recommendations for contract termination. In the event the contractor is not working toward the laid down expectation, they can always recommend a contract termination. They also ensure that contracts are completed on time and payments are also made on time. They also ensure that all contract administration records are completed and they are up to date and also filed. And to some extent, they are archived. They ensure discharge of performance guarantee where required. So I'm going to end the the class. Then you uh, you join again. Eh? Is that okay? Today I'm using my personal Zoom. There was a confusion in the class today, so I'm going to end the meeting. Then you join again. Is that okay? Is that okay, Mugo? Okay.